In the last example, we used a Boolean as the selection for our case structure. However, it is possible to use different types of data as our case selector. If we replace our toggle switch with a string control, notice how the case structure is fed by a pink wire representing a string. Now our cases are also defined as true and false, but with quotes around them indicating that they are strings. What we want to do now is define another case along with our AND and OR cases. We'll call the new case XOR. Since we replaced our Boolean control with a string, we need to redefine the cases. The true case becomes the AND case. The false case becomes the OR case. Now we need to add an additional case for XOR. If we right-click the control at the top of the case structure, we have numerous options for manipulating cases. We can add cases before or after the selected case, we can duplicate the selected case, and we can delete the selected case. What we want to do here is duplicate the case and call it XOR. Now all we have to do is change the setting on our compound arithmetic function inside the XOR case. We now have three cases, but notice our VI is broken. This is because we don't have cases for some of the selector values. Remember for a string we have an infinite number of combinations, but we only have three defined cases. What we need to do is define one case to be the default case which would capture any undefined cases. We will do this by adding a case at the very end and calling it default. Or, we can make any existing case the default case by right-clicking on the main menu at the top and selecting Make this case the default case. What we will put in our default case is a constant telling the user that it is an invalid entry. Notice now, our broken arrow is gone and we can run the program. When we enter the correct selection, we receive the appropriate result. But when we enter something invalid, we are warned. In this lesson, we learned how to use case structures with the string data type.